friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 17th, and I am back home, back in my comfortable basement. And uh, yeah, it was quite a week, quite a week. So I'm going to tell you about that. I've got a Lane Crown Achievement pipe. Actually, I'm finishing up some haunted bookshop that I had. Uh, I was getting so organized here. But I'm going to switch over to Thanksgiving Day in just a minute. Um, and uh, this is, I decided this is my Thanksgiving Day tamper, my Thanksgiving month tamper. So we'll be going with that. And so this is going to be a a bit of a rambly uh, chat today because I want to talk a little bit about what I did over the past week and show you some stuff that I decided to keep as I was going through my father-in-law's uh, fishing room. And uh, this was, it was a big job. It really was. He had uh, stuff that, I mean, some of it, his stuff certainly dated back to the 50s. Uh, he also had stuff mixed in there that I think was from his dad or his father-in-law. So there was a lot of, like like some knives and things that were really quite interesting and quite old and those things um, set aside and, and his wife is, is keeping them or deciding what to do with them. The bulk of what he had was um, things that friends and relatives would have appreciated and so what we did was we sort of went through it and said okay he was teaching his friend across the street to tie flies so let's give him a vice and let's let's let him look through the materials and stuff now I, I, I should have said it at the outset that my father-in-law Ray is the guy that introduced me to fly tying that actually got me interested in fly fishing and um, it's something that I've been doing since uh, well heck since about 1994 I think that's 30 years. Wow. It's hard to believe. And he gave me what I needed to get started. He gave me materials. He gave me advice. He gave me a set of tools. Talked me through the basics. We never actually tied flies back then. Uh, talked me through it. Gave me a book, I think. And uh, sent me on my way. And I just fell in love with it. And... Over those 30 years, I've accumulated a ridiculous amount of materials and tools and everything else. So I needed absolutely nothing. And I wanted to make sure that the people that would be using this stuff would get it. There was some of it that, quite frankly, probably nobody will use. Some old um, um, hen hackle, soft, soft fly hackle that I don't think is fashionable anymore. A lot of yarn. Ray liked liked collecting yarn, um, and he told me once he showed me this big box of yarn. He said it was his mother's. Um, she she was a knitter. Sorry, I got to move things around here to get to the Thanksgiving day. And uh, he would like take all the bits and ends and stuff. And he he really liked using that. He'd tie flies with it. He'd use it for tails. He'd use it for dubbing. Um, and and I do that too. But I also have a a lot of yarn and so you know I don't know if people are going to use that or not but it's there and uh just let this cool down for a minute or so before we reload it it's there and uh hopefully folks will choose to to take it but his the friend across the street who uh, was just sort of beginning fly tying and made sure he got the best vice and a set of tools and you know, the kind of things that Ray gave to me uh, but frankly, the, the better of it, uh, because I think that's what he would have wanted. And then another friend of his named Greg, who's a fly tire, fly fisherman, we're, we're giving him the, the opportunity to go through the rest of it. Uh, and also rods. We gave out a lot of rods. So uh, both Mark, uh, the guy across the street, and Greg got, got rods, uh, family members, grandchildren. Uh, this was, it was a, it was a tough thing to do because it would be, you know, oh, you know, Joe needs a rod. I'm just making this up. There was no Joe. At least I don't think there was a Joe. 
and I'd say, okay, I can I can pick one for him, uh, get a rod and reel together. What kind of fishing does he do? Oh, he fishes. Well, that I, you know, does he want a fly rod? Does he want a casting rod? Because Ray had a lot of rods, and uh, you know, went through everything, gave them out. There's a couple. There's like three really high end fly rods. One that he built himself that we've set aside, and we're letting the family decide what to do with those. Uh, there, after everything was said and done, there's still 12 casting rods and reels that do not yet have a home. So they're talking about donations to things like Project Healing Waters and uh, the Boy Scouts and things like that. So that they will find a home. And that's really the most important thing is that somebody that appreciates and will use these things gets them. So it was a, it was a long week because um, he was not the most organized of people <laughs> and he had a lot of interests and those things got kind of mixed together so I'm going through and I'm finding hunting stuff and, and gun cleaning stuff and things I don't even know what they are and uh, you know mixed in and all of that is you know receipts for uh, an oil change <laughs> and things like that so it was it was a it was a long long uh, haul to get it all done but got it all done and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results i hope his wife is happy my wife is um she's in this phase i'm getting up thanksgiving day now she's in this place where she's worried that you know oh did i slight this person by giving that person something and not giving them the, and i don't know you know i can't i can't do that i can't get into that because it's going to take years and the only way to really do that would be to get you know, 40 people together and say, okay, what do you want? And that was just impractical. So did my best. I think I, I did a good job. And uh, I think that the people that are going to, I hate to use the word benefit, but I guess that's what it is, are going to be pleased with it. And, and they're going to have something to remember him by. And that's the most important thing. You know, he was a guy that deserves to be remembered. He got an awful lot of people interested in fishing and hunting and uh, outdoor type things and uh, I think that you know that those people are the ones that need to have something to remember him by because he was so important in their lives so we got that done and as I was going through this there were things that so because he got me into this and I got very deep I, as I tend to do got very deep into the history of stuff I've really developed a love for tying old style uh, traditional fly patterns, cat skill type flies, and, and other old patterns. Um, and if I ever get the video set up to do some fly tying videos, I'll show you some of those. I have a couple of books. One that I'm really interested in tying is a by a guy named Polly Rusper, who wrote a book called, I think it's called Fuzzy Flies. And he had a very unique style of tying that I enjoy. And I have his book, and I was planning to at some point tie all the flies in the book, trying to use the materials that he used, which is not a trivial thing to do because a lot of these things just don't exist anymore. Uh, so anytime I see you know, old fly tying hooks, mustad hooks, or uh, tying threads, I, I, I get them. And... Usually you can get them quite inexpensively because people don't want them. And as I was going through these things, I, there were several things that I knew people wouldn't want that were going to wind up in the trash. So I set those aside. And with uh, my mother-in-law's permission, uh, I, I kept those as, as a remembrance of my father-in-law and also as something that I know I will use and I know that would make him happy that those things are getting used. So I've got some pictures, i got some stuff I want to show you, uh, just because I think it's interesting. And if you're not interested in fishing and hunting and things like that, you're probably not going to enjoy this video very much. But Thanksgiving Day is fantastic, so... Um, it continues to be a very good, good blend. I talked about it... I think I first smoked it two Fridays ago. And I will probably next Sunday do a sort of in-depth video just on Thanksgiving Day. But I think it's still available. I will warn you, the initial 
like maybe quarter of the bowl is very Lakelandy because it's got that Peretti topping, but that goes away and all the tobaccos and, and whatever else is in there is just wonderful stuff. So, as I smoke this, let me tell you a bit about uh, things. So, hopefully I'll be able to show you this picture. So, first off, going through the rods, there were a lot of rods that were broken. By broke, I mean, some were just outright, you know, non-repairable. And uh, those I, I still kept because I thought, well, if nothing else, maybe I can use the guides off of them or something to fix some of the others. I took all of the broken rods, and I've got a, a picture that I'll show you in a minute. But as you look at this picture, well, let me, let me just get the picture up. That's not a rod. <laughs> all right, let's, let's see if we can get back to the... There we go. This is just the uh, the bundle of rods. Obviously, I don't even know how many are there. Uh, but as you're looking at this, notice uh, to the to the bottom right there, there's a very old bamboo pole rod uh, with an old reel on it. Uh, there's, I think, one bamboo rod in there that has no guides on it. There's a lot of rods that are just missing guides or have the reel seats that are separating, things like that. There's quite a few that have broken tips, but they're not so far broken that it might not be possible to put another tip on uh i don't know i'm going to go through these it's going to be a long long process but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get out the ones that are just missing guides in good condition otherwise and, and i'll put guides on those and get them back to my mother-in-law to either give to people or, or possibly to sell uh the rest of them the ones that are really bad shape they might be projects long-term projects maybe they'll be restoration projects maybe they'll just be parts I, I don't know but we will we will see but uh, yeah definitely an interesting uh, set of set of rods there and that's a fraction of what he actually had this is an old tackle box that he had and uh, I knew nobody would want this it's an old aluminum um, I've got a close-up of the um, let's see if I can get to this a close-up of the yeah so it's Griplock, it's made by uh, Walton, and these are old aluminum boxes. Uh, it's in really bad shape, but it's got the keys, uh, Every all the parts are there. I think it might make a fun restoration project, and I'm thinking that of maybe restoring that and uh, using it to keep all of my rod building supplies in. Uh, so I thought that would be a, a fun thing to do and a nice way to, you know, keep him, keep him as part of my rod building because that's another thing that he got me interested in. Um, so those those were kind of the big things that I decided to keep, and the, the rods. A lot of those are going to go back. Well, the ones that I can make usable again are going to go back. I don't know what I'm going to do with that big bamboo pole one. It's it's really more of a museum piece than a fishing rod, but maybe I'll restore it to pretty and somebody can hang it up somewhere. Maybe I'll hang it up somewhere. Uh, that's one of the, the struggles I have. You know, he had a room that was mostly just fishing and hunting, and, and I would love to have a room like that where I could sort of decorate it appropriately and, you know, put out some, some of the old antique stuff that I have. And, all that but I've got so many hobbies that it's just kind of all mixed together down here and that's great because I got all this space and I can do what I want but at the same time there's not any not any way to like display things that I'm not gonna like an old tool that I'm never going to use but it's just beautiful uh, so got to think more about that anyway let me let me take you through some of this other stuff because um, I think it's just interesting and I'm really pleased that I was able to save some of these things so i talked a bit about the tying and the, the fact that i use these old components and this is a box of mustard i'm going to need i'm going to need my specs mustard 3906 sprout hooks and these are probably best these are these are slightly bent I'm not going to be able to hold this, am I? You're never going to see this. Slightly bent um, nymph hooks. These are these are for uh, 
hopefully you can see enough of that. These would be for tying things like uh, caddis pupa, uh, nymphs. Um, these are these are number eights, and uh, I got a, got a whole box of them. So that was pretty cool. And these you can't buy these anymore. Uh, and when you're tying a traditional pattern, uh, you you want to use as close to possible the original stuff. So also. Got three spools of Nemo tying thread. And the neat thing about this is this is absolutely unavailable. This at once was the premium tying thread. And uh, a couple more. Got a black, a tan, and a darker tan kind of color. Uh, this is unwaxed thread, which nobody uses anymore because it's a pain to wax it. But again, if you want to tie a truly traditional pattern uh, using all the original materials. That, that's the kind of thing you want. Um, a couple of bottles that just I thought were cool. This is called uh, Guidebrock Glass Rod Varnish. So I think this was actually varnish that he used on uh, the wraps. I'm not sure, uh, but it's actually not, not at all dried out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's it's still liquid. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure, but I just like the bottle. I, I, and the other one, i got to try to clean this up a bit. You're never going to be able to read that, but you can see this has a little brush in it. It almost looks like nail polish. Um, this is actually, I cannot read other, anything other than dry fly oil. So this was something that you would brush into the dry fly to help it float. Um, you you brush it in on the stream, and then you do a couple of false casts to to dry it. And usually, it's some kind of a solvent mixed with paraffin, and the solvent evaporates, and you're left with this coating of paraffin on the feathers that helps the fly float. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Not not planning to use either of those, but just kind of as artifacts. Uh, I think that was really neat. And uh, what else do I want to show you? I've got a couple of these really old reels which obviously probably never going to be used. This one I think is really particularly nice. Uh, missing the winder, but yeah, so maybe, maybe it's a restoration project or something. I, I don't know, but I just, I couldn't let them go in the trash. Um, and I did, uh, again, because he taught me to tie, I did take a couple of tools. One is this broken right bobbin uh, he snapped the end off of it and I don't know maybe maybe I'll use that for wire or something but uh, again nobody would want to use that the one tool that I took that I, I just you know the, the most important thing to a tire the, the, the thing that a fly tire will never let out at this site are his uh, tying scissors and I'm very particular about my tying scissors I've got a pair that uh, I will not part with under any condition and I will not tie a fly without using them. So these are not, this is a bit of an indulgence on my part because this is, you know, when, when I hold these, I'm, I'm thinking about all the flies that he tied and, and everything. So I will probably not use them, but it's, it's, you know, the best memento of him as a fly tire. Some of his flies. Um, and, you know, the funny thing is, I did not know him in his prime. By the time I met him, his hands were already giving him trouble. And I didn't see him tie many flies uh, a couple of times. And they were always like big streamer type things. And, and to be honest, not not very skillfully tied. But, you know, he, again, his hands were, were giving him trouble. And he wasn't tying regularly. But some of these patterns are actually quite nice. I mean, he's got, let's see if I can, I really should have brought like a tweezer with me or something. Ah, one moment. I think you'll enjoy seeing some of these. So this, I believe, is a bee. And this has clearly been fished. 
couple of very elaborate grasshopper patterns. That one had rubber legs. This, let's make sure I can focus on this one because this is really, really cool. You see the eyes on that? And he's done, um, the, the wings are turkey and the, the legs are actually tied pheasant tail fibers. Really nice work, and then he's he had some of these. Uh, I don't actually remember what these are called, but they're sort of a streamer pattern. That's not focusing, is it? And that tail is a little bit of that yarn that I was mentioning, the uh, the red tail, and. Of course, you got to have a woolly bugger. <laughs> so there were a lot of these. Um, and uh, I made up a, a whole box of them for the family and, and just took a couple of examples because I just thought it would be nice to have some of his flies. So yeah, it was... It was uh, interesting to do this because as I was going through this, I was learning more about him. I was I was learning more about how he he thought about fly tying, um, you know, what materials he valued, because uh, there were some materials that were clearly just you know, shoved in the back of a drawer, never never be seen again, and and other ones were you know very carefully uh, put away. And uh, yeah, it was it was it was a really interesting experience. It felt like I got to know him a lot better. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm talking to him because I knew. When he was alive, he would have hated me doing this. This this was his uh, his domain, and he didn't want anybody in there without him. Uh, but I know now that he's in the presence of perfect love and is looking at everything through those eyes, and, and he was probably glad that I was making the choices to give this stuff to people that, that would have appreciated, uh, including the things that I, that I kept because I, I will appreciate them. So uh, yeah, that that's uh, that's pretty much it. One one more thing I'll share with you that I thought was kind of funny. Um, well, not funny really, but made me chuckle in the end. Uh, he had this book, and he had a lot of vintage wooden fishing lures and. Those also went to the family because they're talking about maybe making some shadow boxes with a picture of him in one of these lures or something. Uh, these are these are not things you would ever fish. They're they're antique, but he had a lot of them, and I was thinking, man, these things are beautiful. I I, I really you know I appreciate the the craftsmanship that went into making these. And then I find this book, and I'm like, oh wow, I can make those. I I can, and and I I thought, oh, that's what I need another hobby. <laughs> So he he's once again given me another hobby. I don't know if I'll ever do it, but it'll be fun to read. And uh, again, something that nobody was likely going to be wanting to to pick up. So but if you've never done something like this for someone, it's interesting. Um, as I was as I was going through these things, I, I remembered him showing them to me. You know, I remembered him telling me this is uh, this is the the hackle that you would use on a woolly bugger. It's bigger and 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 you, you tie it in in this way, and, uh, or maybe just showing me something like things that he uh, got when he was out somewhere or something. And you know, the story started to come back. And it really was like he was there in the room, got guiding me through the process. So, re really interesting thing. So, I, I hope that didn't come off as a gloat because it's not. I really didn't view this as oh boy, I've got this stuff now. I really viewed it more as uh, keeping a part of him alive and uh, keeping that part that special thing that he and I shared alive. Uh, and I know that he 
is happy that anyone that he tried to get interested in these things is still interested. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I owe him a big, uh, big debt of gratitude, and I, I have told him that uh, when he was alive. So I'm, I'm happy for that. And uh, yeah, I, I hope. I hope he would be happy with the outcome. So we got things rolling a bit later than usual today. I think it's probably close to 12 o'clock. So those of you that are used to seeing this video come out at 10 or so are probably wondering what happened. I'm just, I'm just being late today. Uh, Stayed up a little too late last night. Saturday nights are rough. When my wife's not here, I can do, and thank goodness she's here. I've missed her so much, and it's so good to have her back. But I would do 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock Creature Features, 10 o'clock to uh, 12 o'clock Spangooly, and then go to bed. And that's late for me. But now, you know, she doesn't want to watch either of those things, so I come down here to watch Creature Features. But, you know, it's not like I can on the dot of eight come running down here because we're talking or she wants me to see something or, you know, whatever. So usually I start late and then I go upstairs for Spangooly and she's watching something and we chat for a while. So it winds up adding like an hour and a half <laughs> to, to my, my Creature Features Spangooly schedule. Not, not good. I'm also a week behind on Spangooly because I was in Pittsburgh last week. So last night I got to watch one of my favorite sort of campy movies, which is uh, Vincent Price and the, the Abdom Abominable Dr. Fives. I almost said abdominal. The Abominable Dr. Fives. There we go. And next week I've got the sequel to that, which I think is Dr. Fives Rises Again or something like that. I don't remember the name of the sequel. But they're great movies. They're they're very campy. They're very uh, they're very Vincent Pricey. I'll just leave it at that. Um, he really he hams it up in these, but I love it. So today I'm doing laundry. I'm uh, gotta fill the bird feeder. Nothing too exciting. And maybe I'll come down this afternoon and start. Figuring out what I'm going to do with those rods. Probably not, because I got some other projects I got to finish up first. But more on that next week. So let me uh, let me let y'all go, and uh, you get off and have yourself a fantastic Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.